Hello students, today we are moving to the last part of the chapter Microbes in Human Welfare that is Biofertilizer. So what are the biofertilizers? The fertilizers of biological origin that means they are the living organisms. Basically the biofertilizers are uh, made from three types. What are they? They are bacteria or fungi or cyanobacteria. See, already I have told you in the organic farming that this organic farming uses the biologically originated pesticides or fertilizers so that no chemical can enter into the crop field, no chemicals can be added into the food and that's how we can able to uh, solve lots of problems in the ecosystem. So the ecosystem uh, normally are attached to the next organism. Each and every organisms are linked to each other. So in uh, in case of chemicals or synthetic fertilizers or synthetic <clears throat> pesticides, what happen? Uh, if we use all those chemical or synthetic uh, fertilizers or pesticides, it can enter into the different trophic levels of the ecosystem. And that's how it is affecting not only one species, but lots of species in the same uh, trophic level or in the same food pyramid. So what happened in the organic farming, we basically have to concentrate that we have to completely uh, stop using the chemicals. Earlier, urea, then ammonia, a lot of chemicals were used in the uh, crop field, in the paddy field, and that's how an adverse effect had been seen in the uh, in human also because humans start to suffer from lots of diseases. It also include the digestive system problems, even the cancer. So uh, another things like those chemicals, they kill the pest, they kill suppose some of the organisms but those chemicals uh, they are present in the uh, pest which is because of what that suppose pest have died, that pest if it is taken by the birds, birds also be affected with that. Uh, so this way it also have adverse effect on the ecosystem, it also cause pollution so that's why organic farming organic farming concept have appeared so that's why we are not going to use any type of chemicals and save our environment so one uh, last part we will see here that is the biofertilizers so what are the biofertilizers see from here questions will be common you can see in the boards also and the need also questions will come surely 100 percent and basically from the examples question will be asked so very small questions are going to come, one mark question or two mark question. What are they? First of all, bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. These are the three groups of the biofertilizers. So from the biofertilizers, what is the meaning of fertilizer? Fertilizer means those which increase the or enrich the nutritional quality of the soil. It increases the um, uh, nutrients, different elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, all those into the soil so that the plants can absorb all those nutrients and also increase the group, uh, food or the crop productivity as well as the nutrient, more nutrient food. And the growth of the food will also be enriched, enhanced by the use of fertilizers. So let us see from these three types of fertilizers, bacteria and cyanobacteria, these two will increase the nitrogen. We know that in our body, nitrogen is a chief component. So it is, it has to be present in the building block of our body like proteins. Protein have to have nitrogen, then only the protein can be formed. And we know that in the atmosphere, our 70 two percentage around is nitrogen but nitrogen if it is not taken by bacteria and cyanobacteria it can never go into the crop field because nitrogen no organism take it in breeding and no other sources are available by which the nitrogen can be uh, entered or fixed into the soil there are the bacteria and cyanobacteria only who fix the nitrogen and this nitrogen via the food go to the next trophic level and from the each trophic level it, it goes to the next other trophic level so nitrogen as it is a chief component of our dna formation even 
okay the nitrogen we get from the food and that food the crop get the nitrogen from the biofertilizers like the bacteria and cyanobacteria so examples we have to see what are the examples these two examples are very much important one is the rhizobium and second type is the azospirillum and azotobacter remember this azotobacter that sorry first of all rhizobium rhizobium forms symbiotic association so they are grouping also some of them they're symbiotic and some of them they are free living so rhizobium here is the symbiotic association that is present on the root nodules which can fix nitrogen from the soil and it allow to enter into the uh, plants next one azospirillum and azotobacter just remember this word a okay letter a so azospirillum and azotobacter they are the free living nitrogen fixer okay so these two are the bacteria rhizobium symbiotic association then azospirillum and azotobacter they are the non-symbiotic free living organism bacteria they can fix nitrogen into the plant next one come to the fungi this group will add phosphorus into it and also by the use of fungi the uh, other organisms suppose the plant born lots of pathogens are there root pathogens are there so it is fungi who not only act as a biofertilizer but also it can act as a biopesticide so that's why fungi are very very much important so those uh, those fungi some examples we need to know this fungi can be divided into two type one is <clears throat> the ectomycorrhiza and another is the endomycorrhiza. First of all, see this fungi, it forms symbiotic association with the root of the higher plants. Okay, so it forms the symbiotic association, that means it helps both the two other organisms, not a parasite or not a, only a host. Okay, it is both the organisms are helping each other. So this symbiotic association of fungi and the higher plant roots, they are called as mycorrhiza. So the genus is Glomus and it helps in absorbing the phosphorus from the soil. It prevent also the root borne diseases. Remember that this fungi can also be a biofertilizer, can also be a biopesticide. Some of the examples see, first example is ectomycorrhiza and second example is the endomycorrhiza. So what are the ectomycorrhiza? One example you have to see basidiomycetes and the second one is endomycorrhiza this is very much important now remember that VAM okay vesicular or vascular mycorrhiza which add phosphorus into the soil into the root of the plant so that the plants can absorb the phosphate phosphorus from the soil by actually with the help of this fungi okay so remember this mycorrhiza examples ectomycorrhiza this is basidiomycetes and endomycorrhiza VAM. But as a whole, mycorrhiza, the genus you can write that is Glomus. Okay. So these are forming symbiotic association. So these are the fungi which add phosphorus to the plant. Next one come to the cyanobacteria. So this cyanobacteria will be blue-green algae, okay, which also fix nitrogen into the soil, into the aquatic medium also, as well as into the terrestrial medium also. And good thing is the cyanobacteria can also survive. They actually are present on in the aquatic medium also. So that cyanobacteria can be taken by the small fishes small fishes can be taken to the taken by the large fishes so that's why in the aquatic ecosystem also the cyanobacteria will fix the nitrogen so so it is balancing actually the nitrogen into the into the aquatic as well as into the terrestrial medium too okay so see these are the autotrophic micro autotrophic means they can produce their own food they are the blue green algae they can synthesize they have on uh, chloroplast which fix nitrogen in the aquatic as well as in the terrestrial media so that thing is important it will also present in the aquatic medium but otherwise fungi and bacteria they survive in the terrestrial media only but cyanobacteria it is living it is actually main basic component basic source of energy in the aquatic medium is the cyanobacteria so see they are living in the terrestrial media 
एग्जाम्पल एनाबिना नोस्टो ऑसिलोटे ऑसिलेटोरिया बी जी ए ब्लू ग्रीन एल डी दे आर लिविंग इन द एक्वाटिक एंड टेरेस्टिल मीडिया हु फिक्स नाइट्रोजन इन टू द सॉइल एज वेल एज इन टू द एक्वाटिक मीडियम राइट सो दिज आर दाइनो बैक्टीरिया विच फिक्स नाइट्रोजन ऑल्सो सम अनादर एग्जाम्पल्स वी हैव टू सी वन इज फ्रेंकिया एंड अनादर इज द ऑलोसिडा What is Frankia? Frankia is actually a symbiotic association in the raw in the non-leguminous plants. So in the non-leguminous plants, it will help in uh, making association and help in form adding the nitrogen into the soil. Next one, another example we have Olusera, which is non-symbiotic nitrogen fixer in the rice field in India. So this example sometime can be asked because Frankia was asked one time. So we have to remember that. so examples you have to remember these things are very much important these questions are coming so you have to remember all these bio fertilizers so that's all about the video so that's all about the whole chapter microbes in human welfare we have studied microbes in the household we have studied the microbes in the industries beverages and alcohol companies then after that we have seen the bioactive molecule chemicals enzymes then after that we have seen the <clears throat> sewage treatment then uh, biogas treatment then after that we have seen the uh, best different type of bio uh, control agents okay that is bio pesticides and here we have completed the bio fertilizers so that's all about the topics of the chapter hope you have understood microbes in human welfare it's not difficult you have to remember just some names okay some examples that's all about it and only two questions that can be long question one is sewage treatment and another is the biogas plant so all these things you have to see otherwise five mark or one to one questions that can come okay so that's all about the uh, video that all about the chapter hope you have understood thank you